Next, we have Professor uh, Kimberly O'Neill presenting her topic of fear and fantasy in American literature. <sighs> well, that's unfair. <laughs> you guys have come up with such a brilliant way to wreak your revenge on us professors. <laughs> Um, there are some poems going around. There aren't enough for everybody. Um, I didn't expect such a great turnout, but um, it's incredible for you, the Honors College, that there are so many people who love learning so much that they'll come do it at 4.30 on Friday afternoon. So that's <laughs> incredible. Um, basically, what my very short talk is going to be about is how stories shape the way we understand the world. They shape our past, they shape our present, and they can even shape our future. So that's what I'm going to be talking about through this very short, incredible poem. So I'm just going to read it for you really quick, especially in case you didn't get a copy. Um, can you guys hear me OK? OK, great. Uh, Langston Hughes, Johannesburg Mines. In the Johannesburg Mines, there are 240,000 natives working. What kind of poem would you make out of that? 240,000 natives working in the Johannesburg mines. So this poem invites us to learn more about the past. We can learn, for example, about Langston Hughes himself, who is African American and many believe to be gay. So we can think about the history of gender and race oppression in the United States. But this is not a poem about African Americans or a poem about being gay. So it also invites us to learn about Langston Hughes's present and about our own present. We can learn about who these natives were who were working in the Johannesburg mines. Um, Johannesburg, as many of you probably know, is in South Africa. So we can learn about South Africa under apartheid, learn about the gold mines there and the oppression of native peoples. We can also ask ourselves, why Hughes chose to write a poem about him, what he felt his connection with those people was. And that can inspire us to ask about our own present and about what our connection is to those natives who even today work in the gold mines in Johannesburg. So that brings me to the future. The talk, uh, the title of my talk is about fear and about fantasy. And that's about what we think of the future, what we imagine the future to be. And that's the real power of literature, of poetry, of stories. This poem has a paradox in it. It asks how you're supposed to write a poem about these people, people who live across the ocean, people whose lives are so different from Hugh's life or from our from Hugh's life or from our own life. And also about how to write a poem about atrocity, about suffering so terrible that to make art of it seems cruel, seems impossible. But the paradox is that Hughes does exactly that. He writes this poem, and he writes it for us. Next year, I'm going to teach American literature. I'm going to teach Intro to Women's Studies. Um, I'm also going to teach a course on women writers of color, and finally, a course for senior English majors about conspiracy theories. So everyone should become English majors, so you can take my class. And in all of those courses, the premise is going to be that stories have made the world we live in today and that therefore they have the possibility to change the future world that we live in. Thanks.